good morning. I'm here with an orange, my avocado toast, getting all healthy. I went to the grocery store the other day and I just bought like a massive amount of produce and then I realized, oh hey, I'm one person and I have to finish all this produce before it goes bad. It's fun though, it's like a challenge. I bought a lot of books and this was all like just a little bit before Christmas and then after Christmas and I have some more books coming in but I was like, you know, these are piling up. I haven't done a book haul in a very long time, so exciting. And that doesn't mean in any way that I haven't been purchasing books. Uh, it's just not something that I've shown you guys, so let's show you. The first one I'll show you is the one that I'm currently reading, and this was a gift that I was given by a friend, and I've already shown you guys because it was in a readathon TBR. If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. Uh, this is about a girl that has moved to a new town because something terrible happened in her old town. This is the summary that I told you guys uh, during the readathon, but I didn't realize that the the terrible thing that happened was in the summary. She was a boy and she wanted to be a girl really badly and because of that she was absolutely tormented and she had a suicide attempt and there was all of these things. It's just, it's so heavy and it's written in such a not heavy way and I think it would be so perfect for like required reading at school. It's very topical and even if you're aware of some of the issues in here, you're not going to be aware of all of them and it's incredibly eye-opening. So I think any person should read this. It's great so far, I'm halfway through. And again, it's not written in a heavy tone at all, it's just like, written as a normal YA contemporary except for so many heavy things. <laughs> Loving it. Let's just go one by one. I went to Barnes & Noble to look for gifts for other people during Christmas time and then I picked this up for myself because it was in the bargain area. Broken Monsters by Lauren Bukes. Um, I remembered seeing this about a year or two a lot in the booktube community. It's like a mystery novel. I think that they're trying to find a serial killer of sorts and he like fuses bodies together so the body that they found is half boy and half deer and that's where the story takes off. I'm not one for mystery but I'm definitely one for suspense and I know those usually go like two and two together but I'm just not one for the let's sit down and figure out this crime sort of thing. I'm in it for the like weird suspense thriller type thing so hopefully this is more in that realm. It seems really interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful cover too. I was at my friend's house over Christmas time and I was picking up all of the books that I lent him um, before he went to college and then I was like, hey, those two on your bookshelf, let me add them. One of them was One More for the Road by Ray Bradbury, which in hindsight probably shouldn't have borrowed because I like read a portion of Something Wicked This Way Comes a few months ago and didn't finish it. Not that I don't love Ray Bradbury's writing, it just wasn't something that I was into at the time, but I should have finished one of his books before borrowing the next one. It's a short story collection of his, which is totally great because I loved The Cat's Pajamas, which is another one of his short story collections. That's it. I'm ready for it. I'll read it eventually. Another book that I borrowed from him, which I'm very excited about, is Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer. I've tried to read Everything is Illuminated multiple times and I just can't get through it for some reason, um, but I heard that this one's a lot easier of a read and I loved reading Eating Animals by him. He does have a beautiful way of storytelling um, and you could tell that just from his nonfiction books, so reading an actual story from him would be very, very nice and then I finally get to watch the movie as well, which I heard is amazing. Very very excited. My first day of 2017 was absolutely incredible. I was brought to the Strand and then also to Bryant Park and uh, we ate lovely food and just I got to walk around bookshelves for the longest time and it was so nice. This is my favorite bookstore. They claim that it's 18 miles of books. Um, this was only my third time going but I found that I was able to go into corners and recognize those corners and be like this is where I find really great books. So I was able to like target different places and it was just such an incredible day. Loved it. So first on the pile is another volume of Octopus Pie. Uh, does this, oh, volume two, apparently. I don't really read these in order, ever, and I know that I probably should. There's like a little bit of a storyline going on, but for the most part, it's like, I don't know, you could read them out of order. I bought a volume of Octopus Pie every time I've gone to the strand thus far, so I had to pick one up. I've talked about these before. The comics remind me very much of Broad City. It's just like two girls hanging out in the city, very realistic, funny, raw, love it. I picked up The Bell Tolls for no one by Charles Bukowski. Charles Bukowski is one of my favorite writers. However, I've read none of his poetry, which blows my mind because he's very well known for his poetry. I've read his two novels and then I have read um, On Writing by him, which is just a bunch of letters that he's made um, to other people, like his editors and whatnot, throughout his years. This is just a bunch of his unedited, unpublished work. So definitely looking forward to this. His writing is something that I feel like I could read anytime. Like you don't have to be in the mood for him. It's just something that's just 
blatant and raw and beautiful and simple and that's something that I can go for at any time. 2AM at the Cat's Pajamas by Marie Helene Bertino. This is a cover that I've seen so often. I feel like this is a book that's just not even talked about a lot but it's something that I've just seen so often. It's about a smart mouthed rebellious nine year old who also happens to be an aspiring jazz singer. I didn't read anything but that first sentence when I was in the Strand and I was like I could definitely go for that because at that time I was reading a book that was in a seven year old's perspective and I loved it. It's $9 and a signed copy. I don't really care about it being a signed copy but $9 I was like all right if any of you have read this before please let me know how it is because this is one that I'm actually probably gonna put higher up on my TBR because I am very interested in it. Next, Red Earth and Pouring Rain by Vikram Chandra. This is someone's first novel and it's this large, first of all. It goes back and forth between contemporary America and 19th century India, uh, which I have been very interested in the history of India and religions that stem from India and whatnot. Um, so I picked this up mainly for that. And I was just in a corner. It was an impulse buy and <laughs> I'm just hoping that it's good. It's really fun that I was able to like go into a bookstore and just pick up books because I haven't done that in a very long time. This is the Canterbury Tales and this is the deluxe modern classic edition from Penguin. I collect these editions. I think they're the most beautiful things in the world. Deckled edges. They have this nice little flap thing going on. They always have an introduction by someone that's very highly acclaimed. Um, I just really like the way that they look on my bookshelf. The last thing that I have to show you is I got a box from Book of the Month, which I get every single month. I don't know. I really like the box. I showed you guys my last box, so I was like, why not show you this one? Book of the Month is a subscription where you could pay, it's like from $13 a month to $9 a month, I think is what your book will average out to depending on what subscription that you get. But it's always like a brand new hardcover and you get to select it, which is always a really nice thing. So they give you like a range of five different ones picked from five different judges and then you get to pick the book. I like that, it's just, it's different. It's always nice to have a surprise, but it's also very nice to know what you're going to get. And I'm not someone that generally looks at new releases so, the fact that this one forces me to look at the new releases and see what they're about and get me excited about the new releases is something that I enjoy very much. And these are all always so beautiful and again only like $9.99 a month for a brand new hardcover so I like it. I'll leave a link down below so you can get 10% off I think. I'll leave the information down below. Something will be down there that you could click on if you'd like to do the book of the month box. I opened this beforehand because I was really excited about it but I didn't actually open the packaging and they gave like an extra book this month which is really exciting just for you know being a part of book of the month bless them and I read this little part and then I immediately knew what the little book was so I got really excited about it don't let it size fool you this tale contains as many twists as a story by Gillian Flynn so then I obviously knew that it was the grown-up this is a little novella by Gillian Flynn this is beautiful I'm in love with it I'm so happy that I own it because I wouldn't have bought it myself because it's usually like $12.99 at Target and it's this tiny so I was like no thank you but I got it for free God bless them. Also, side note, this isn't a company that I work with at all. I just really like this. I've been getting it for the past four months now, and I've just enjoyed it every time, so ayo. It also always comes with this bookmark, and on the back of the bookmark, it always shows you the book of the month that you picked, as well as a short summary by the judge who picked that book. I actually picked three of the selections that they had this time just because I wanted them and uh, it's only $9.99 extra for each book that you pick, uh, but I had credits so they were for free. So each one came with a bookmark with the summary. Look at how pretty they just look together. Like together they look so nice. Homesick for Another World is a masterclass in self-deception as a universal feature of human condition. It's a short story collection. Apparently this person is very uh, well known for their short stories. Otessa Mosh. But short story collections for me, like most people, are very like iffy. So I'm hoping that this will be a good one. There's actually been uh, quite a few short story collections on their selection picks lately. Whatever Happened to Interracial Love is the one that I picked last month and that one was also a short story collection. So maybe this will be the year for uh, short fiction. We'll see. The other two that I picked are actually in uh, teenagers' perspectives, which is interesting uh, because generally this is adult fiction. I believe these are still considered adult fiction, but they have young adult narrators interesting. Girls in the Moon. This book is about Phoebe and Phoebe has two ex-rock stars for parents and she herself is a budding poet and she's learning how to grow up in a world where she can be her own sort of artist. Look at this cover! So beautiful! The next one is The Most Dangerous Place on Earth. They're talking about high school. This is by Lindsay Lee Johnson. This one's from Janet McNally. Forgot to mention that. This one has all the stereotypical high school characters but apparently we're diving deep into them 
them in a more humane way. Again, just sounds really interesting. All of these, like as soon as you read the synopsis, you're like, oh, I just want to dive into it. That's what I really like about their picks as well. They're things that I never heard of. And then when I hear about it, I'm like, oh, it sounds so good. And that was my haul. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now I get to eat. God bless. Definitely bruised my orange because I played with it the entire time. The next video that you'll be seeing from me is most likely a food related video. Just what I ate in the day because I was eating healthy and I was like, why not show humans that I do that and I don't just eat dominoes all the time. Making strides. I hope you guys are having a great day and a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye.